Okay, so we're going to talk about the dodge and the burn tool. The dodge and the burn tool are found right here on these icons right here. And the shortcut is the letter O. So if I want to switch between the dodge tool and the burn tool, I will use shift O. The way that these two tools work is very simple. Dodge will lighten something. So if I make my brush bigger and I increase my exposure, let's say to 100, if I go to, for example, the sphere right here, notice that the more I click on it, the brighter it gets. Now burn will do the opposite. Burn will darken things. So for example, if I increase my brush, and again I go to the gray ball, this is what burning does. And the more passes I give it, the darker it gets. So understanding that the dodge will lighten something and the burn will darken something, we have to look at the common options that these two tools have. First one obviously is the size of the brush. We can change it here or like any other brush in Photoshop, we can use our bracket keys to go up and down. We can use shift control on a PC or control an option on a Mac to make our brushes big and small by moving our mouse left and right while we hold those two keys and then to get a sharper edge we would go and move our mouse down if we want it softer we move it up okay and then to the right you will notice two key menus right here our range and our exposure I'll start with exposure. The exposure is how much of something that you want to do. How much burning, for example, and how much dodging. All right. And remember, these two tools right here have their own brushes. So as you will notice, in my dodge, I have a sharp edge brush. And for our burn, we have a soft edge brush. So I'm going to soften the brush for my dodge. All right. Then the next thing we're going to cover is the range. Now, when it comes to the range, if I select this gradation right here, right, this is just a simple black to white gradation. And I'm going to start with the dodge tool. I'm going to hide those little ants right there. Now, if I dodge on the shadows, Notice that when I go to my highlights, nothing happens. However, when I go to my shadows, I can lighten them up. If I select midtones, the midtones will be highlighted faster than the shadows or the highlights. And if I select highlights, obviously the highlights will get lightened faster than the midtones or the shadows. So if you want to lighten shadows, then select shadows. And if you want to lighten midtones, select midtones. The same thing for the burn tool. If I select the burn tool, and let's say, for example, I want to burn my highlights, as soon as I move my burn tool, you will notice that the highlights get burned right away, okay, because I've selected highlights. And if I select midtones, notice that as I click and drag, my midtones get darkened over anything else. And if I select shadows, my shadows would get darkened opposite to the highlights and the midtones. All right? So be very aware that when you use those tools, you have to decide what are you going to darken, shadows, midtones or highlights, and when you dodge, shift O, make sure you select where you're going to dodge, where you're going to lighten, your shadows, your midtones or your highlights. And then the exposure, again, it has to do with how much dodging you're going to do or how much burning you're going to do. All right. We're not going to worry about these two right here. And let's talk about the dodge and the burn tool as painting tools. So, for example, if I lower my exposure for my dodge and I go to midtones because these three objects right here have a neutral gray of 50%, so they are considered midtones. If I go to these tools right here, and for example, I'll start with a sphere. What I can do is with a low exposure, I can start 
that's too much. So let me go down to, for example, 10 or 11. I can create a highlight on this sphere or on the cylinder. I'm going to lower this even further and when I give it the second pass I will get a stronger highlight or on the cube. And for the cube I can put my highlight towards the bottom part and notice that for a 3D shape, I was able to get one of the three light planes. And remember, for a 3D object, we have three light planes. We have a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. And right now, we have a midtone and a highlight on all three objects. So to create the third plane of light, our shadow, I will use the burn tool. So if I go to the burn tool, again, I'm going to think about what am I going to burn? Am I going to burn a highlight, for example, the highlight, or am I going to burn the midtones or the shadows? Well, obviously, these ones don't have shadows. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to burn, I'm going to darken a midtone. So I will switch my range to my midtones. I'm going to lower my exposure very low, for example, again, 10 or 9. And I'm going to make a very big brush. And I'm going to start with a sphere. I'm going to make a quick pass on the sphere. This is one pass. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And then I'm going to make one pass. Another pass. And then a third one. And do not stay in the same place when you do this. Don't hesitate to go more towards the highlights. That way you don't create a stripe of darkness. Now let's go to the cylinder. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this part of the cylinder my shadow area. So I'm going to give it quite a few passes. And I'm even going to move towards the top. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And notice that because I've darkened the midtone, I would have to switch to my range of shadows and make a dark area towards the bottom and since I've switched to shadows I'm gonna go back to the sphere and darken this bottom area right here to create a darker shadow now I'm gonna to go to my cube and I've decided that this plane right here is gonna be the dark plane and again Notice how difficult it is for me to darken this, and I know exactly why. It's because I had switched my ranges to shadows, so I'm going to go back to midtones, and look how much easier it is to darken now. And I'm going to make the right hand side a little bit darker to differentiate between my shadow and my midtone plane. Now I'm going to go back to the cylinder, to this side of the cylinder. And I'm going to darken this area right here to separate it from the top midtone. And let's do that real quick. I have to make sure that I only darken the top part. And there it is. So as you can see with the dodge and the burn tool, we can create a sense of depth by creating three light planes, a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow by making our highlights right with the dodge tool and making our midtones darker and creating a shadow area using our burn tool.